Hi everyone and welcome to Retailing. This is Chapter 1, Introduction to Retailing. So let's get to it. Uh, so here you got the objectives. We're not going to read it all out loud. You can go through it yourself and you should watch these videos and you should uh, take notes and you should follow up because you can see that the grades uh, when you do uh, go up and the grades when you don't go down. So here we are to define retailing, to introduce a concept of strategic planning, to show why the retailing concept is the foundation of successful business and to indicate the focus and format of the text. Now certainly uh, things have changed enormously but we are going to stick to the course and we're going to stick to the material that we have here. All right. So retailing uh, encompasses the business activities involved in selling goods and services or products and services to consumers for their personal family or household use. It includes every sale to the final consumer. So issues at this time when this uh, course or this chapter was written, the issues were how can we best serve our customers? Uh, while earning a fair profit, how can we stand out in a highly competitive environment and how can we grow our business? All right, so those are the main issues that I still think are will never go away. They're always going to go away, always going to be around, especially when you have competition. And we discussed this before about competition. Competition is good, always good. It makes you better. And in retailing, you have to be good. You have to be proactive to have success. That's the philosophy of retailing. So uh, here it is again, can best address these questions by fully understanding and applying the basic uh, principles of retailing, as well as the elements in a well-structured, systematic and focused retail strategy. So you need a plan. You need to plan to work in a certain way for it to be successful. And one of the best ways to do it certainly is to have trained sales uh, representatives or sale associates in a store. So here we have a figure of uh, 1.1 boom time for Lowe's. Lowe's is a store in the States and now they have bought out a couple of stores here. So if we look at working or careers in retailing, certainly there is a lot. Again, we're sticking to this um, uh, chapter as it's given. Uh, in retailing, positions and jobs have completely changed as we go forward uh, with the, the factual of uh, uh, online retailing. Amazon has completely changed how we see retailing. But again, we're going to stick to what we think or what this chapter is going to tell us. So to do well, uh, we're going to have to follow the chapter. As you can see, this uh, web page here, I wouldn't be surprised, does not exist anymore. You can click on it and take a look at it. I didn't, but it might not. So an ideal candidate for a retailing career, yes, you need to be a, a people person. Uh, flexible, more and more that word is in our new normal. You have to be really flexible today. Uh, be decisive, you have to make decisions, you have to be proactive. And you can't uh, flimmy flammy over things. You really have to follow a certain course. Uh, you have to have certain analytical skills, a lot of skills actually in retail. Uh, yes, you have to be healthy because they're retailing, working in retailing stores, especially, would uh, certainly demand a lot of stamina. So when this was done, uh, the 10 largest retailers were uh, in this order, Walmart, Home Depot, uh, Kroger, and Target. I'm not sure this is the same order today. This is just to give you an understanding of where retailing is. Online retailing certainly has changed. We don't see Costco would certainly be a lot higher on this list. And uh, Home Depot would still, still be at the same spot, I would think. Walmart is still very strong. So if we look at a typical channel of distribution, uh, it goes from manufacturer to, to wholesaler to retailer to final consumer. But uh, certainly uh, certain companies have changed that and one of them being Costco. 
Uh, the retailer's role in sorting the process, if you can see there's a whole bunch of manufacturers, wholesalers and retailers, this is how it goes into one store. So you have a lot of manufacturers going to wholesalers, uh, wholesalers I should say, and it leads into retailers and then customers. Pro pretty sta stable process even today. So multi-channel retailing, a retailer sells to consumers. Uh, through multiple retail formats, websites, physical stores, and all that. A lot of uh, uh, retailers do that today, like Apple used to just uh, not, wouldn't be multi-channel, but they are even multi-channel today. So there's a lot of stores now that have products in different ways of retailing or selling it. Uh, again, please stick with me on this, uh, what we see here, fig figure of Brooks Brothers and a store closed in the states and multi-channel retailing and if you look at uh, relationship management among retailers and suppliers and what kind of disagreements would you have certainly the control of the channel the amount of profits that you could make or you will uh, share in some cases and also the number of uh, competing retailers uh, the product the how are they displayed on the shelves and also promotions and one thing that's not go away is how you have payment terms and payments like two percent ten or even less and also how you operate in flexibility of operation and there's that word again flexibility so distribution types you have exclusive suppliers make agreements with one or few retailers that designate the latter as the only ones in a specified geographic area you have intensive the suppliers sell through as many retailers as possible and yes you probably have questions on this as you go along selective suppliers sell through a moderate number of retailers certainly this has changed in many ways but we're like i said we're going to stick to what we have here here's a little graph that shows you the different types of distribution and, and also graphs of number of retailers versus uh, potential for conflict, uh, support from supplier, and so on. So we do have a lot of graphs in this chapter one. This is an introduction to retailing. So special characteristics affecting retailers, small average sale, impulse purchase, you know, what kind of strategy the store has, and also the popularity of the store so if we look at the retail strategy itself right and overall plan for guiding a retail firm right you always need a plan it influences the farm's uh, business activities and also influences the firm's response to market uh, market forces okay so all retail stores have different types of retail strategies when it comes to uh, also geographic and also in the country itself now six steps in strategic planning first one would be well you have to define the type of business that you have you have to learn and to learn and to set objectives some are short meaning months or weeks or days and long meaning uh, quarters or years you always have to determine the uh, customer market you have to devise an overall long run plan and you have to implement an integrated strategy and at the very end uh, what you have to do when all this is said and done well then you have to go back to the beginning and you've got to evaluate and you need to correct so these are six steps in strategic planning in retail based upon the information in this chapter all right so figure 1.9 pay less plus export more at Target. So here, if we look at Target, uh, certainly they were not successful here in Canada when they came in, but they are successful still in the States. I'm not sure how successful they are today with everything that's going on. A lot of companies have declared bankruptcy. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised that Target is suffering right now uh, because of the uh, pandemic. So aspects of target strategies, if we look at an example or a case study, right? A growth objectives, uh, appeal to a, mar a prime market, and so on and so forth, all the way down to mar monitoring performance. So there's a lot of KPIs. So we talked about KPIs. 
uh, in the past, key performance indicators. A lot of these uh, aspects would, could be considered to be also um, KPIs. Uh, applying the retail concept, so we've got the orientation of the customer, the effort, what's the value, and how you will orient your goal is the concept leading to retail strategy. Here's figure 1.11, eliminating shopper boredom. That's a fun one. Uh, so certainly customer service plays a big part in retail. Activities undertaken by a retailer in conjunction with the basic goods and services it sells. So customer service would uh, reorient itself around hours. The parking would be important. How shopper friendly it is. How much credit or different types of payments that you can make. And they put this at the very end, but uh, in today's world, salespeople, or as I call them, sales associates, would be very, very important, even more so going forward for retail outlets. So as uh, we all know, a lot of companies won't survive what's going on today. And the um, overall structure and the map, retail sales map here in Canada, anywhere in the world, basically, has completely changed forever. Uh, retailers will need to be Amazonic and be really uh, able to compete against them because in some ways that's the only way uh, they're going to survive. And a lot of companies have not survived and a lot of companies are still to go on the wayside, unfortunately. So it's not just restaurants that are are going to be shutting down. Uh, retail stores, the JC Pennies of the world, all the so many stores. Uh, Marcus Sneeman, I think, is the one that's already went bankrupt. Uh, Aldo Shoes just went bankrupt, and or has closed. I'm not sure they went bankrupt, but they've closed and they're only shipping online. So a customer respect checklist. Uh, this course certainly doesn't revolve around customer service, but we have some customer service issues here. Uh, do we trust our customers? That's a very good point. And yeah, do we stand behind what we sell? Is keeping commitments to customers important? How much do we value a customer and its time? Do we communicate with customers respectfully? And uh, do we treat all customers with respect? Pretty much the same thing. Um, and uh, one of the last points, do we thank customers for their business? And again, do we respect our own employees when we, we are our co-workers in a retail store? Well, here's an important factor that you should look at. This is effective or, or relationship retailing. Seek to establish and maintain long-term bonds with customers. This is one point that I think we discussed in the past. Uh, I called it LTV, long, uh, lifetime, cost, lifetime value, or even uh, what we talked about, I think somewhere along the way we did, for sure, the cost to acquire a customer. So relationship retailing, uh, even more so today, it goes even further than this, concentrate on the total retail experience, monitor satisfaction, after sales service kicks in probably at this point and always stay in touch with customers. Again, this is a, a little dated when it comes to information and uh, certain things have uh, been updated since then, but we'll stick to this information. So effective relationships re uh, retailing would use always when you can negotiate a win-win situation or approach. And it is harder to get new customers than to keep existing ones happy. This is absolutely true. And this is what I mentioned to you over and over again. We talked about lifetime value and customers we want to keep or customer approach that way. Uh, so make them happy no matter what. So I think that strategy um, about uh, lifetime value and effective relationship retailing, same thing. I think what you want to do is going forward, we're going to, uh, we're, I keep saying we're, but I think uh, I'm just, or putting myself in the world of today. In general, if I had a retail store, I would do anything today to keep customers. Uh, unfortunately, that could be very expensive and you can cut into your profits if your competition plays a monster part. Yes, you can also develop a customer base. 
So approaches uh, to the study of retailing, you have institutional, uh, strategic, and functional. And if you look at parts of retail management, the strategic approach, uh, building relationships, we talked about that, and strategic planning, uh, retailing institutions, what they are, the actual behavior of customers or consumers or information gathering, we talked about surveys, how important that is. So we ran into these chapters, other, other uh, different uh, modules about uh, different information, but it's pretty much the same thing. So we'll look at also elements of a retailing strategy and also integrating, analyzing, and improving retail strategy. So that is chapter one. Uh, we will have a quiz on this and you can take a look also at the doc to get more information and uh, more into the knowledge of what's going on in retailing at the level of what we just saw in this chapter. Thank you.